possible shortages in gas deliveries from Russia. Gas prices are rising daily with little Moscow to Moscow no is demanding that Berlin pay in rubles. Why the world is in crisis. We have an energy crisis. The race is on to revolutionize the auto industry. Experts say we're going to see an explosion of electric Big investment from Ford as it ramps up or prepares We have the technology up. to transition to a zero emission fleet. We are in the midst of a transport revolution, exceeding that of when the car replaced a horse and cart and the internet changed communication and connectivity forever. I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to tell you why you need to transition to an electric vehicle sooner than you may think and before it's too late. Roll it. jump in, let me just lay down some background. Protecting our planet is paramount for the future of, of our planet, and transitioning from fossil fuel energy to renewables is front and center. Energy accounts for more than 75% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions, with industrial energy accounting for 25%, commercial and residential buildings 17.5%, cooling, heating, lighting, etc and transport, just over 16.2%. Now, some data does suggest it's more like 20, 22%. Now, transitioning to 100% renewable energy for powering our buildings is certainly happening, not quick enough. But transitioning to electric transport is very doable and arguably quickest way for us to meet our mission targets. We will significantly reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by electrifying all transport. And we're halfway there. So where are we at? Well, there's an EV arms race happening as I speak, and it's heating up. Governments across the world are hugely committed to phasing out ICE cars, internal combustion engines, by 2030 or 2035, depending on which country. Now, Tesla is leading the way in terms of production, volumes, and innovation, but legacy auto for the likes of Ford, GM, Volkswagen Group, Nissan, Toyota, are playing catch up. There's also a ton of EV startups across the world. Lucid Motors, Fisker, Polestar, Rivian, Xpeng, NIO, BYD from China. There are literally hundreds of EV startups using a wide range of technology. Now much more of this on my Patreon channel. As a member, you'll find additional content on all my episodes with more of a focus on technology and the companies making the biggest impact. A deeper dive, if you will. Link in the description below. Let's quickly take a look at the sales numbers of EVs across the globe. This growth will gain momentum as adoption accelerates due to more cars on the market, competition heating up, and lower pricing. Now, the general consensus is that EV sales will reach 35% of the market by 2025, with some 19 to 20 million vehicles sold. ARK Invest, a leading innovation fund manager, they predict a far higher adoption curve, getting us to 50% EV market share by 2025. Now, I would certainly agree with that, absolutely. The only issue I have with that is, I don't think supply is gonna handle that demand. And that's only three years away. A recent survey performed by Ernst & Young of some 13,000 people in 18 countries shows that 52% of car buyers are committed to buying EVs. Now, that's a tipping point. Okay, let's take a look, who's buying them and where? In 2021, of the 6.5 million EVs sold across the globe, 85% were split between China and Europe. Some 2.5 million cars were delivered in Europe, accounting for 19% of all cars sold. China's easily the biggest market, and it's accelerating at breakneck speed. Some 3.2 million EVs were delivered in 2021, accounting for 15% of all cars sold. Last month's figures just came in at 33% for May in China. A third of all cars sold were EVs. Almost 50% of all EVs sold across the world in May came from China. That's a huge jump. The US only 4%, and it's understandable given how cheap gas prices are, or were. I expect in 2022 we're going to see that number change significantly. But I want to focus on one country as a prime example. It's a little country in northern Scandinavia, Norway. A country of fjords, islands, cold climate, Vikings, but most of all, the largest oil and gas producer in Europe. So not the most likely place to start an EV revolution. Norway. 
Now, car sales for March this year was 86% EVs. All this happened in just 10 years. What drove the almost immediate adoption of EVs in Norway? Primarily through strong demand side policies. 2017, the announcement of a ban of emission cars by 2025. Government tax subsidies for EVs, well-organized infrastructure, huge incentives in place to accelerate adoption. So I think the question is, if Norway can do it, can't we? Now I wanna get into the juicy bits. What's the real benefit of owning and running an EV? Let's take a look. Number one, better for the environment, ton. Number two, running costs, by how? Electric motors are very simple. There's no very few moving parts, really. It's just a sort of a coil of magnets. And because there's very little moving like parts, there's no need for servicing. There's no oil change. Hell, there's not even a transmission. There's, no, there's only one gear. In fact, electric motors just go on and on. They last forever. There's very little wear and tear. I mean, should you have a problem, higher-end EVs run servicing through an app which runs a diagnostic, isolates the issue, an over-the-air patch is sent, et voila. And if for some bizarre reason you need a technician, appointments are made through the app, they turn up at your house, cup of tea, they fix it, oh, how civil. Then there's a fuel saving. Well, with gas prices the way they are, no need to go into too much detail there. EVs are simply better in every way. They're a complete redesign from the manufacturing process to the car itself. The only thing complex in the damn things are, well, the computer's running them. Ooh, coffee break. Now I want to talk about the intrinsic value, the true value of an EV, the technology value, if you will. Higher end EVs are built entirely around the software package. Software handles everything and much more. Every aspect of the car is connected. Software bridges the physical dynamics and performance to the user interface that controls it. Everything in the car can be manipulated with a touch of the screen. Automated three-dimensional factory lines producing software on wheels. That's the deal here. And it's completely disrupting the auto industry. It's like what the iPhone did to Nokia and Blackberry. Let me explain. So the heart of EVs is the software and over the air updates, remotely updates that software on a constant basis. So the software first approach offers a glimpse of what your car will be able to do in the future, then almost deliver it into the future in real time. The very same car you drove out of the dealership two to four years ago is as good as the brand new version in the showroom today. A Tesla, for example, knows how to park and will soon have fully licensed autonomous driving. Why shouldn't it drop me off in front of the store and then find a parking space all by itself? and then pick me up again when I summon it. Now this is defining. You're not just buying the capabilities of a car at purchase, but you're buying into a roadmap of unlimited capabilities. It's not so much the physical car, but you're buying an asset, an asset that's improving over time. I can't stress this enough, but the agility of a car being entirely run by software is critical to the value preservation of that car. Right now, I believe we're witnessing the tipping point in the market. EVs are pretty much at price parity to ICE cars. Demand far outstrips supply. And we're really close to autonomous software, very close. Now, if you were to buy a car today, this is how I believe the cost curve of EVs look like over the next seven years. And what I mean by cost curve is, what's the value depreciation over time? EVs will lose little to no value over the next four years or less. Now, supply alone cannot catch up in time to meet demand. In just two years, the value will start to appreciate as demand further accelerates. The increase of value past four years accounts for the arms race in transport as a service, or TAS, or robo taxis, ride hailing fleets, as driverless cars get fully authorized and transport pretty much as we know it changes forever. Now, the normal value curve for ICE cars is pretty constant. We expect to lose 50% of its value within four years or so. The problem is, as demand for ICE cars diminish and demand for EVs accelerates, the real value curve for ICE cars looks a little bit more like this. Whilst a middle range or top end EV like a Tesla Model 3 or Y will start to go up in value. 
The difference between them both is 80% plus. Robo-taxi fleets will add huge amount of pressure on the supply and demand gap as fleet operators will have hundreds of thousands of block orders placed. It's a higher margin business when you take the human salary out of the equation. But just quickly, more about this phase in my next episode. Strap in, it's gonna get juicy. I'm truly concerned for Legacy Auto. I don't believe most of them are gonna be able to pull this transition off. So it seems I don't really believe we have a choice right now. I'm opting to buy the asset that's going to see me into the future and retain its value over time. It's a no-brainer. So next week I'm doing a huge piece on autonomous vehicles. I'm breaking it down top to bottom. So don't forget to smash that like button if that's what you're into. Subscribe below and join me on my Patreon channel. There you get access to uncut versions, all the research, additional content and much more. So with that, peace. Mm -hmm.